Thank you so much for having me and I really do congratulate you on the establishment of this very fine peace centre. And I wanted to also uh, say that uh, on behalf of Lund University, where we do uh, spend a lot of time researching peace and conflict, we're very happy to have um, a partner in you. So you have a natural partner in Lund University. Um, in Sweden, for those who might not know where Lund might be. So I have to say that I was somewhat daunted when I saw that uh, I was going to speak amongst such incredibly um, well-known but also uh, established people. Uh, and also at times when I come around with my little thing about celebrity, it might seem a little um, banal to say the least. But I'd like to think that studying different actors is key to understanding peace, conflict, development and the whole set of issues. If anything, it provides a little glamour to the discussions here today. And I'm not referring to myself then, but to my friends, the celebrities, or not really my friends, but the ones I'm obsessing with at times. Um, so, one thing I wanted to talk about is that within international relations scholarship, within a lot of development research, there is a growing interest in celebrity humanitarianism with a range of very fine contributions from colleagues um, in a range of different countries. And a lot of this research tends to indeed um, promote ideas about celebrity, celebrity society, celebrity culture and international development. And because you're all knowledgeable in the context of peace and conflict studies, you'd know that there is a very strong link between development and peace, as we've already heard here today. Uh, what's lacking a little within this broad, very fine uh, set of uh, research contributions is perhaps an explicit emphasis on issues to do with peace and conflict. And surprise, surprise, that's where I come in. And uh, what I'm interested in scholarly is indeed the role of individuals in international politics. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that my colleagues Celia and Pia asked me to come along here today. And, of course, the, the sort of uh, citizens that I'm interested in are global citizens. They're extremely privileged and they don't necessarily represent the rest of us. But yet, I'm interested in unpacking their stories. In particular, since it would seem that they are very central to discussions on international relations more broadly. And what I've done so far is to take a critical approach and sought to um, unpack the transformative and cosmopolitan qualities that such individuals might possess, while critically unpacking the inequalities that these very individuals also help to sustain in the international system. So, what I wanted to do is to talk a little about a couple of these people. One thing that seemed extremely appropriate today is to talk about Sean Penn. And why is that? Well, it's because we're seeing Hurricane Matthew unfolding in Haiti as we, as we meet and gather here today. Very sad, this morning when I was watching BBC News, about 300 people had died. Lots and lots of displaced people. And we know that displacement, poverty, is not exactly good for peace. 
And this is a country that has been tainted by such disasters numerous times. And this is a picture of Sean Penn carrying food aid in Haiti. Because last time around, there was a massive disaster of this kind in Haiti. He got very involved. And after a couple of days, in the aftermath of um, the natural disaster in 2010, uh, you could see him walking the streets of Haiti carrying aid uh, and both being cele celebrated for his efforts, but also uh, critiqued. And who is Sean Penn? Well, we all know that he's a controversial artist. He's been married to Madonna. He's been accused of gendered violence within that marriage. But he's also somebody who is a humanitarian activist. And he has not only involved himself in Haiti, but has also been a very loud critic of military intervention. And uh, in just prior to um, the second Gulf War in 2002, he visited Iraq and wanted to see for himself what was going on in that particular part of the world was very critical of George Bush, the second's policy on Iraq. Wrote letters in various American newspapers and objected to military in intervention. Another thing he's done, and some of you might be aware of it, is to strongly object forms of colonialism. For example, with emphasis on the Falkland Islands, which a lot of people found extremely random. Because all of a sudden, articles appeared in The Guardian in which Sean Penn had a strong view on Brit British presence in the Falklands. Caused a lot of uproar and irritation in the UK at the time. Uh, he's a provocative, pro provocative columnist, has written numerous pieces for the Rolling Stone, and Indeed, he's working across different contexts. In the aftermath of the disaster in Haiti 2010, he established his own NGO. And you can see here he's wearing the T-shirt fronting that NGO. Uh, and it's the JP Haitian Relief Organization. And in my unpacking of his work, uh, I have found that um, he's indeed um, seemingly quite committed to turning himself into a relief worker. As opposed to a lot of other celebrities, he has taken part in this kind of work, but has also attracted a lot of bad media attention for that kind of work. Being accused of seeking... Um, to upper his own brand, as it were. But there's also, I would argue, room for radical politics within his work. Let's see if we can... Um, there. The other person I'd like to talk about is somebody who's indeed... Um, in media, continuously and always, Angelina Jolie, ex Pitt, as she's currently going through a divorce, which is posing some analytical problems for me because I've written a text in which I define her as a global mother, the perfect wife, mothering her rainbow family across the world, taking them her children on all sorts of trips, more recently bringing them to observe hardship and humanitarian disasters in conflict zones, and often doing so with the back backing of her very famous husband. But of course, this is no longer. Instead, she's taken up, as you might know, a visiting professorship at London School of Economics. So I'm getting closer 
to Angelina. <laughs> that was a joke. Anyway, what she's, what, um, what she's been doing very prolifically recently, and you're probably aware of that, is indeed to promote um, the eradication of sexual violence in conflict, which is also something we need to talk about. The fact that conflicts, a lot of wars, are deeply gendered, embedded within um, gender systems and gendered power relations. And whatever we might think of Angelina Jolie, it might indeed serve some purpose to put these issues on the global agenda. And here I've just listed some of the things that she's been doing. Here you see a picture of her alongside William Hague, her band of brother, if you like, in this uh, regard. And that's not a particularly good picture, but all of us are indeed deeply concerned about what's going on in Syria. And Angelina Jolie is self-defining, I think, as a citizen of the world, speaking out um, against atrocities in Syria, often being known to shame and blame the leaders of the world in their incapacity to do anything at all. And... I often get the question, in fact, I got a question today from a journalist whether these individuals indeed have any impact whatsoever. How can we measure? Because just like peace itself, it's very difficult to measure individuals' impact on global issues. But I think the, the media attention that Angelina Jolie brings to a particular issue is something that we should at least consider whatever we might think of that. Sadly, though, quite often when she does speak out on an issue, the tabloids, the gossip magazines, but also the serious press, they, try, they tend to be more interested in her choice of clothing on that particular day. So it's all embedded within a much more widespread celebrity society and celebrity culture that we're living in. doing very well. You know who this person is? It's George Clooney, who's very known for his work on seeking to end violence in various parts of Africa, often finding himself in controversy, having been arrested, for example, for his activism alongside with his journalist father and being quite adamant and now of course not just having a beautiful trophy girlfriend on his arm but having married a very well respected international lawyer so as such uppering his status if you like as a state person in international politics and one of the things he's done and this is not a project without controversy is to fund a new project, the Central Project, which aims to end conflict on the African continent by tracking the money, financing such conflict, and see what fuels the conflicts themselves. And this is meant to focus on Sudan, South Sudan, DRC, and other countries. And George Clooney has been asked why he feels a need to kind of take on board this peace diplomacy, if you like. And he said that he's very dissatisfied with traditional forms of peacemaking and peace diplomacy, conflict management, and that he sees a role for himself and such people in complementing orthodox foreign and security policy. Um, so, for those who are interested, uh, a report has recently been um, published in the context of this project, and it's called War Crimes Shouldn't Pay, Stopping Looting and Destruction in South Sudan. Uh, and uh, another thing he's done, and I've written a little on, on this, and it's very interesting, is to finance a satellite sen sentinel project 
which is basically using a long lens camera to document human rights abuses in South Sudan. And um, he's both been celebrated and also indeed um, questioned for that kind of work. Um, in terms of the Century project, it's been critiqued because it's often been seen as an imposition of a set of solution to conflict and war in Africa and involving very few Africans. So having a very colonial aspect to it. Uh, and uh, in being asked why Clooney wanted to uh, use a long lens camera in uh, documenting human rights abuse in South Sudan, he said that the main reason was to get to the perpetrators of genocide. When asked whether he was indeed spying, he said, and this is very controversial, it's only spying if it's conducted by a state. I would take issue with that. <laughs> Another question one might ask oneself in the context of indeed gathering information using a camera in this way is if Clooney has taken on the role of a sovereign state, a sovereignty of sort, a sovereign entity of sort, because usually spying or intelligence work is something we associate with a state rather than an individual, even if there are, of course, a lot of agents, um, intelligence agents. But as far as I know, he's not one of them. And he has not. And then I thought, well, he's got better things to do now, doesn't he? got married last year. I just think it's a beautiful picture and that's why I included it. It doesn't have any function. Um, so I wanted to end this by asking whether indeed these individual celebrities are challenging the system. Are they challenging practices of war, sovereign integrity, integrity narrowly defined? capitalist conceptions of welfare? Or is it indeed the case that their work confirms and sustains global injustices and that they, through their privilege, their notion of Western protection, which is often quite gendered, indeed prolong and extend colonial practices that we thought we'd put a stop on some years back? Uh, maybe they sustain conflict. Who knows? I, I know that I have not got any answers in terms of numbers. But this is um, something I think we should all take an interest in, since so many of these people would seem to be sought after by leaders, by governments. It's very common for NGOs to front their work with a famous face. So, thank you very much.